Everybody, welcome back to Wicked Good Sports. This is Miami Minute, where we cover my favorite team, the Miami Dolphins. Let's get this out of the way real quick. The keys to the victory today, of course, were the running game. Surprisingly, something that we have not seen pretty much all season. And the defense stepping it up in the second half. Two of first part had a pretty bad day by his standards. So when he faltered, the defense in the running game stepped up. And they were able to defeat the Jets 31-24. to It was the same margin of victory as their other win against the Jets, which was 27-17. to Though that one didn't seem as close, didn't ever seem like the Dolphins were going to lose that, at least in my opinion, while watching it. You know, the gut feeling you get. I came into this game after the week of, like, players testing positive for COVID. Most prominently, Jalen Waddell and... Javon Holland, plus a few other notable and actives. I was like, you know what? It's been a great run. If they lose, you know, COVID is an extenuating circumstance. These things happen. I'll be disappointed, of course, but I won't be completely distraught. And in that first half, well, especially the first quarter, it really did seem like they were going to lose. They were down 10-0, then 17-10, to before eventually... Regaining the lead in the second half, 27 to 17. Then Tua threw that pick six, 24 24. Then responded with a very, very good drive to put the Dolphins ahead for good, 31 to 24. So, as I said, the biggest surprise in this game was the running game. First start for Duke Johnson, former Miami Hurricane, and of course, former Houston Texan and Cleveland Brown. He looked very solid today. He had 107 yards on 22 carries and two touchdowns, so really big day for a 4.9 average. Miles Gaskins, he also had COVID this week, so didn't practice very much. He had a 54 on the ground on 10 carries, but there was one very long run that really added and kind of padded his stats there. Um, Tua added 19 yards, including a really great uh, struck stick over one of the Jets defenders. So that's always good. Um, it seemed to hype his team up quite a bit, which is what you want to see. In the receiving game, in the absence of Jalen Waddle, Devontae Parker led the way with four receptions for 68 yards and a touchdown. Isaiah Ford added three for 51, and Mike Kosecki added five for 43. And shout out to Duke Johnson, who added a 20-yard reception on top of his rushing game. I do think that they'll probably stick with Duke Johnson at least into the next game. It feels like he's earned another shot at starting, and you can't really argue with the results. I mean, this is what we've been saying all season. The Dolphins need a new, you know, running back to take the load off of Tua in the short passing game and Jalen Waddle. They need someone who makes the defense respect the run. And I do have a very soft spot in my heart for Miles Gaskins, but he has not been the answer. I thought maybe Philip Lindsay, but we haven't seen him since that first game. Maybe there's a chance that he sticks around, but if Duke Johnson can continue to run like this, we may have found, at least for now, a solution at running back. And that has to make you excited as a Miami Dolphins fan because that has been sorely lacking for this team this season. On the other side of the ball, it didn't start out great for the Dolphins' defense. That first half was tough, giving up 17 points. And then the second half, they pitched a shutout. The only touchdown came off of a two a pick six. We'll get to that, of course. Um, they played hard. They forced turnovers. They got sacks. They made big plays. And this defense has really, really turned the corner to really lead the Dolphins on the six-game winning streak as they get back to 7-7. Seven and seven. As I said, Tua didn't have a great game. Of course, having under 200 yards, 196. He added two touchdowns, but two interceptions. And while the second interception especially felt backbreaking in the moment and felt like, oh my God, all the Tua haters are right, Tua can't get it done, the way Tua responds speaks to a mental fortitude that I think very few players, or hell, very few people in general possess. Because he didn't let him get it down. 
he went out that very next drive, led a long touchdown drive, capping it off with the Devontae Parker touchdown for the lead. So hats off to Tua and how he responds to adversity. We've seen it, one, generally for the season in the sense that he's had to respond to the adversity of the rumors swirling about the Dolphins trying to replace him with Deshaun Watson. He doesn't seem to have let that get him too down. Then, specifically, in games where he has turnovers, he will come right back out, lead the team down the field, score a touchdown, and that's really impressive and something that, while it doesn't like show up specifically on the stat sheet, it is like an important aspect to the eyeball test, I guess would be the best way to put it. And so I've been very impressed with Tua from that point of view. Not overly impressed with how he played for the entirety of the game, but that's okay. Every like game offers an opportunity for different players to step up. This week it was the running game and defense. Tua, it's been him in the past. So not the end of the world. Every quarterback has some bad games. Special shout out to Christian Wilkins. You know, he's fun. He's always the first guy. Well, oftentimes he's on the field when they get near the goal line as he's a blocker. Today he scored a touchdown, a receiving touchdown. He was losing it. He jumped into the stands. He tried to do like a break dancing head spin. I don't know if anyone else noticed that. Uh, his teammates were super excited repaying how excited he tends to get when these score touchdowns. So that was extremely fun. You'd shout out to him. What a, what a pick, you know, we, we complain about picks on the show. We being me, I complain about picks very often on the show, but Christian Wilkins, that was a slam dunk. Um, just from talent effort and like what he adds to the team in terms of being a teammate, it seems like, Everyone loves him, and I think as a fan, it, it makes him very easy to root for. So, other than that, um, the biggest picture of this is the Dolphins are now 7-7 seven and seven after a 1-7 start. When I came on here after the, was it, loss to the Falcons, I believe was their last loss, I said, okay, the season's over. Let's, like, just see what we got into it and keep going. The Dolphins are... At 500, they have a long way to go to make the playoffs, but at the very least, they put themselves into position to potentially make the playoffs. It's going to be tough. New Orleans was probably the easiest game they have left. Then they have Tennessee, which they lost today, which is not great. It was kind of hoping that they'd be able to pull away a little bit, maybe want to rest their players in Week 16, but, or gosh, yeah, that'd be week 16. But, of course, the Colts beat the Patriots on Saturday Night Football. And the Steelers lost today. So, I believe they're only like one game apart from one another in the winner and loss. So, not ideal. And then the Patriots, again, I was hoping that they would beat the Titans, beat the Bills, so that they would have nothing more to play for that week 17. Because Bill Belichick has shown he's not afraid to rest players. In that last game of the season, if there's nothing worth fighting for. But they lost to the Colts. We'll see how they do against the Bills. Um, I mean, it, it could be that they're fighting for the division week 17. And I guess in that sense, like, it would be easier if they were resting players. But what's the point of getting into the playoffs if you're just going to get smacked in the mouth and get knocked out? So... We have three more games. They're essentially three playoff games. Leave them in the playoffs for the last six games, and they've they've done quite well. So an exciting time uh, that I didn't think was going to be possible after that one and seven start. So I'm very thankful for that as a fan, as someone who covers the team. And yeah, we'll see what happens. What did you think about the win against the Jets today? What do you think about the Dolphins' playoff chances? Do you think they'll beat the Saints, beat the Titans, and beat the Patriots to make it? They'll probably even need help if they pull that off. But let me know what your thoughts are. The Dolphins making the playoffs. I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below. And I guess just what are your thoughts about this six game winning streak after the seven game losing streak that started off the season? That wasn't great, but we're, we're in better times now, I think, but I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, we got plenty of other videos covering sports topics. We got NBA, NHL. So we also cover the saints in depth. Um, our, 
my co-host Jack, he's a huge Saints fan, so it's like this, except I'm also there to add my little bit of commentary on what I know about the Saints. It's a lot of fun. Check out the channel. Give us a subscription. Thank you so much for getting us to 100 subscribers so we could get that custom URL because this is youtube.com slash wickedgoodsports, finally. You can follow the channel on Twitter at you can follow the channel on Twitter at Wicked Good Sport and on TikTok. Uh, just search Wicked Good Sports. This channel is, of course, Wicked Good Sports. I already said that. The main channel is youtube.com slash Wicked Good Everything. You can follow that on Twitter at WG Everything on Instagram. Wicked Good Everything on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Wicked Good Everything. Thank you so much for listening. And after all that, we will see you in the next one.